Recently, I've been working on a new multi-purpose light setup that I can use for providing a soft wrapping light for my product photography, provide some fill light when needed, or even offer a fun mood or accent lighting for video ambiance, or even for when I'm just working around the studio. And I wanted to accomplish all this with a reasonable budget. Well, I think I finally got a setup I'm happy with, and it even does RGB. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and this intro will self-destruct in five seconds. False alarm? Thanks for nothing, Michael Clifford. All right, so regarding the light, let me show you what I came up with. So it's basically three products. We've got the new Aperture Lantern, we've got the GVM 150S, which is an RGB Fresnel light, and then we've got this C-Stand, which is from Newer, that I got on Amazon. It was the cheapest C-Stand that I could find that I thought would do the job. So I'll give you some mini reviews of each component, and then I'll show you what they can do as a combo. So let's start with the C-Stand. So pretty uninteresting, it's just a C-Stand. This is the one that has the arm with the extendable arm, and we're actually able to extend this all the way out, and we can lift the C-Stand up past the ceiling. It goes, I think, like 10 feet in the air, so we could have it as a complete L situation where the C-stand will go up and L out and then we can have this light completely upside down. And it'll work pretty well. You might want to throw a sandbag on it just to stop it from tipping over, but I found that as long as I put it under the leg that it does reasonably well, but I do think a sandbag would make it a little bit more secure. In terms of C-stand quality, in case you guys are looking at the newer ones on Amazon, this one was $150 US dollars. And it's okay, it's pretty good quality. There are a couple minor imperfections, but at $150, I think it's a pretty good value and I would recommend this product. And I'll show you a little bit more of what it can do as we talk about the other products. So moving on then, let's talk about the light first because that's the main thing of what's going on here. So this is the GVM RGB 150S, which is very similar to the other GVM light that I covered before that also does RGB. Now again, it's got a couple things about it that I don't love, but overall I think it's a pretty good value light. So first of all, a couple things that I don't really like. I think that the yoke system on this isn't the greatest. If I swing it around here like this, you can see that there's actually two handles, there's two knobs to adjust the yoke and you have to use them both in sync and they're both actually a little bit weak. So for instance, if I loosen this one on the left, see how it's already starting to dip down and you have to like kind of lift it up and you can hear that weird clanking sound and then even when you tighten it down, there's quite a bit of droop. So I don't love the yoke system. It works and if you tighten it down a lot, you can get it to work, but it's not fantastic. The second thing, is that this comes with a Fresnel, sort of a semi-Fresnel. You can go from 60 degrees to 120 degrees, which there's a knob on this side, which I'll show you. So you can adjust this knob here to extend the light, which will give you a more narrow beam angle or pull it back in to have a wider beam angle. But the problem that I found with this light is that it tends to droop when you use it in this overhead position, which is what I'm using it for. So you can see it doesn't take a lot of force for it to kind of slowly come out. So I found that it does kind of sink over time. So I wish that was a bit tighter, maybe it had some kind of lock to it. And speaking of locks, this thing has a Bowens mount, which is great because then we can attach aperture modifiers like the lantern or light dome, whatever. But the Bowens mount implementation could be a little bit better. The way that you actually secure your light modifiers to the light is by this wing nut up here, which I'm not sure if you can see it, but not only is it too wide to fit correctly in with the body of the light, it actually rubs against it when you try to get the last few Titans in, so it's really annoying, but it takes forever to unscrew it. You probably have to do, I would say, 20 to 30 <laughs> rotations in order to get the light out. So I would say it probably takes like 45 seconds of unscrewing a wing nut where the aperture lights obviously they just have a, like a release where you pull back a lever and then you're gonna, so the Bowens mount works but it definitely could be implemented a little bit better. Those are the main flaws that I have. The only one that I have is, has to do with color temperature which if you've watched my other videos like on this GVM light over here which I love if you've seen my review of this panel light, I highly recommend this panel by the way. And if you haven't seen my video on this light, I recommend that you go and watch it because it's gonna be a more thorough review of what you could basically apply to the COB version. But basically the problem with this is that the RGB is great, but when you use it on bi-color mode and you go from 5600 Kelvin to anything slightly warmer, like 5550 or 5500 Kelvin, there is a significant jump in color temperature. And I measured it and it's about four to 500 Kelvin going just 
100 Kelvin on the light. Another thing that might be a little bit of a con for some people is the noise. It is a little bit more noisy than some of the other COBs that we've tested. So the fans are located right here and there are no fans in the power box. And it's not really a control box either. It's just literally a power adapter. All the controls are up here. So all the noise comes from here and there's no way to control the fan curve or when it comes on or off or turn it off. It's just always on and it's always at its regular noise. So I have a lav mic on here and I have a pencil hypercardioid mic up there and they're both kind of pointed at it. So I'll just give you a couple seconds of silence so you can see if we can pick it up at this level. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem. I'm pretty close to it now so this would probably be an extreme version of how loud it will be. Now moving on I was talking about the power box. One of the issues that I do have, this is a mains power only light by the way, there's no battery power. But one of the issues I do have is with the cable length. So I'm going to undo this here because I came up with a bit of a solution for it. So this cable, which is the one that runs just from the light to the power adapter, is only about just over a meter, about three and a half feet long, which is definitely not long enough for letting this go to the ground. And if you were to let it go, it's obviously going to dangle and put a little bit of force here. It's nice that it has a bit of a right angle connector, but I don't like having power bricks dangling. This one is lighter and smaller than some of the ones, but still, it's not very smart. But to combat this, and inspired by the Aperture 300D Mark II, which I just most recently reviewed, which I highly recommend you check out that video, I love that light. Basically, I made a little super clamp adapter, so I wrapped some metal strapping around the power adapter on top of tape so it doesn't scratch it up, and then I just attached a small rig super clamp to the side using a 3 8 to quarter 20 adapter, and I put a little bit of shoelace around it so that it wouldn't sink or slide around. And now we can just use that super clamp and attach it to the C-stand here, and that will hold it in place pretty well, so it solves that one problem. But then from the floor, the cord isn't very long either, so the higher we put this adapter, the shorter that floor cord is even going to get. And this is basically the entire length of it. It's right around, I want to say, 10 feet or just around 3 meters, I think. And uh, you're definitely going to want an extension cord if you're using this light because combined these two short cord lengths is not going to be enough to get the job done. But it sounds like I'm ripping all over this light and I'm not trying to. Those are just sort of the issues that it will come with working with it. But there are so many great things about this light that I do like. Basically, it's RGB modes and the cost effectiveness of its output. So this light is $470, which is actually, it's, it's a great price for all that it does. It's a little bit more than some of the discount COB only lights, but those lights don't have RGB. And the RGB implementation is fantastic. It's a single press of a button, just like with the panel. That switches it over into RGB mode, but it's using an HSI rather than an RGB, so you're not dialing in the individual colors. You're just changing the hue, and you can basically just spin the knob so you press the knob and then turn it, and it cycles through all the colors. Super easy, you get the 360 degree control there. You choose a hue that you want, and then if you do press it again, you can control the saturation, which obviously the lower the saturation, the more white it's gonna get. So you can adjust the intensity that way. And then your brightness knob now still basically operates as a dimmer, but that's gonna give you the third of your HSI controls. So super fast to get the color that you want, really easy and the colors are really vibrant and I love them. I've been using that panel in the background of my videos for a really long time, putting that blue cast. It's fantastic. Now before I move on to the lantern, I know that I didn't really cover this light thoroughly, but that's because I wanted to defer you guys to Lunascope Film School, who made a video on this light back in March, and I was actually watching it when I was first looking into this project, and I really liked this video. I liked the personality of the host. I think he did a great job and had some great tests. So rather than just make my video completely redundant of that one, I'm going to throw a link to that video in the description. And I highly recommend that you go check it out because I'd rather support other creators and promote other channels than just make redundant videos. But overall, my sort of final conclusion on this light is that I think that it's a great value for what you get and that I'm okay with getting past some of the build quality weaknesses. It's definitely not built as well as an aperture light if that's what you're used to, but I'm willing to ignore those flaws for how awesome the RGB implementation is and the versatility that you get out of this light as long as you don't need battery power portability. Now let's move on to the Aperture Lantern, which is a new modifier from Aperture that costs around $90, which I think is a great price. You're getting great value here. It's very versatile, very soft, and really, really fun to use. So let's switch this back over to the bicolor mode. So what I like about it is how soft and enveloping this light is. And obviously you can think lots of purpose for this. Like I said, you know, we can jack it up and tilt it over so you can get like an overhead light that you could use for podcasts or interviews. But what I like about it too is that I can use it for a work light. If I switch it over here, you can see that we're going to get this really nice soft light on the bench here. 
and that's going to be great for the product photography that I do. But what I also like about when it comes to working in this environment is that it's really hard to block the light or occlude it with shadow. Usually when I'm working like this, I will find that if I put my hand over something, there's a big shadow and I can't see what I'm doing. But because this light is just throwing it everywhere, I find that it's actually really hard to obstruct my view and I'm loving it as a work light. A little bit large, it might be a little bit impractical as a work light, but again, if you have a bulky enough C-stand, you can get it up and out. Now, putting it in a narrow shot might not be the greatest option, as you saw in the beginning of this video, it did occupy a lot of the frame, but if you have high enough ceilings, you could get it up and out. But for me, I'm gonna use it just out of frame usually, or when I'm working, just have it just slightly out of the shot where I don't really care about it, but when I wanna do product photography, I like having it really, really close like this because it makes such a nice soft light. I don't know if you can see that on my hand right now. But you can also control that light, even if you didn't want it to be so wide and enveloping. You can, let me lock this down. There's these flaps that come with the light, and they're just Velcro. And I have them rolled up here, but you can just, I don't know if you'll be able to hear me over top of this Velcro is, but you can unroll them, and they're reflective on the inside, and they go down pretty far. Let's get one all the way down. And there's four of them in total going all the way around the light, so they're actually kind of, I think I rolled them up a little bit too tight here. I might suggest doing more of just a fold because this is kind of tedious, but I thought it looked good when I had them all rolled up. So, they're actually quite long, and when you have them hanging down like that, here, I'll turn this up, and then if we pivot the light over this way, you can see that you're gonna be able to get quite a bit of control now where Obviously this whole area on my table is now completely darkened. So you still have the control that way if you didn't want the light to shoot a certain way or if you only want to go to the sides or split the beam that way. So that's fantastic. Overall, I just really like this modifier. I think it's really fun to use and it's very easy to set up. You basically just push down on this center beam and it just spreads out and then you lock it in place. And like I said, you can get rid of these things a lot easier if you want to than rolling them up. You can basically just fold them if the neatness wasn't that important. And I just think for $90, it's a fantastic modifier at that price and definitely a recommended buy. So overall, right around $700 for the stand, the light, and the lantern, which I think is actually a pretty great price. It might seem expensive, but as soon as you add RGB into the mix, usually the price gets inflated quite a bit. So the fact that we can get all this with RGB is actually pretty decent at $700. The only thing that I would do now is probably add casters to the bottom of this so I can wheel it around like Caleb Pike, because it is a little bit heavy and awkward to be moving this thing by lifting. So I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Overall, I'm really happy with this configuration, but let me know in the comments if you could put something like this to good use and what you would use it for, because I'd love to know your setup ideas. But that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done.